So, I watched a movie last night, uh, and it's a very topical movie, uh, given what we're dealing with uh, in the world. Um, and, you know, I know that these have been a little bit tried, uh, you know, over the course of the last uh, couple of years. But I watched a pandemic movie called 28 Days Later. Um, I had, I, I don't know if I've seen this movie before, because some scenes I recognized, but some I didn't. So I think I'd only ever seen bits and pieces of it. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm in the state of mind where I feel like the world is ending. So I've been watching uh, some, you know, pandemic movies. Uh, well, at least I've got some on my list. And so this is the first one uh, that I got to on my list, 28 Days Later. Uh, so I, I'm going to try to not uh, talk about spoilers, but also, um, you know, this is an older movie. So if you haven't seen it, like, you know, it's not, you know, just go watch it. I mean, it's like, I, I don't know. My opinion is like, un, like, a lot of the movies that like people worry about getting spoiled like, knowing a plot point or being exposed to a plot point doesn't really affect your enjoyment um, of it much, you know? Like, if, if, if you know um, that, like, you know, that there's, like... Like, if, if the movie is story-based, right? And, the, like, the whole movie, like, you're... They're going for that, like, triple, quadruple, like, you know, 720 twist at the end. Then knowing the twist is going to spoil the movie. But this is a movie that's more about just the experience. Um, and so... Uh, you know, it's a good movie. I, I enjoyed it. I liked the the long, drawn-out scenes. Um, I liked the music. The music was really good. Like, my my one of my favorite parts of the movie was probably the beginning, where the motherfucker wakes up in the hospital, and he's just wandering around, and then there's, like, that, like, slow-beating soundtrack in the background, and, like, you just see garbage everywhere, and you don't quite know what's going on. Like, I mean, you know, it, you know what's going on. You know there's zombies. You know, like, there's the context. There's a zombie movie. You're going in. Um... And so, I watched the movie on HBO Max. Uh, does your copy of the movie start grainy as fucking get clearer over time? I noticed that there was definitely some weird, um, like, there was some very weird stuff, like, with uh, transitions in this movie that I thought was a little weird. Like, I, not bad, but weird, you know? But one of the things I did like about this movie on that note is the cinematography is really good. Like, they ha like they like the, the camera is, like, its own character in a lot of ways where it's, like, you know, not only are you watching a story unfold, but you're watching, like, the camera, like, you know, does a lot of really good pans, right, to, like, wa like seeing the whole, like, city, like, being desecrated or destroyed. It does, like, the, you know, the, the, the quick turn where it's, like, you know, someone moves or whatever, and then the camera does, like, one single motion turn. You know, I, I love I love movies where like it's not just you're watching a story unfold and it's just characters on screen, but like the way that you're watching the story unfold is so interesting and unique. And I feel like this movie did a good job of that, of like the way the camera moves around and follows the characters and the way scene transitions work. Um, but yeah, so I did I did watch the alternate ending, uh, which is probably better than the main ending. Um, but I do understand why, like, I, I, in my opinion, I feel like movies and media in general, people are very, uh, like, they, they, like, people just feel like some, I don't know what it is, but some desire to have things have, like, good endings. You know what I mean? Like, like, I never, like, I personally would say that every art piece should have a good ending and a bad ending. I love the idea of alternate endings. I love the idea that there's a good ending and a bad ending. A bad ending where like everything dies or everyone dies or the main character gets shot and dies or whatever. And then the good ending where they, they dodge the bullet, right? Because, you know, it's basically really what you're doing at that point is just, you know, creating a, you know, it's just like the many worlds theory of quantum mechanics, right? Like both of, both of these endings are as valid as each other. One doesn't need to be canon, right? Like the idea of canon, I never understood. But anyway, uh, so I did like the alternate ending a little bit better. I love the way it's drawn out. Um, you know, I think it's, it's pretty good. But anyway, uh, the movie is just good. I like it. Um, it's got a lot of those really long drawn out scenes where it's like, you know, world building. I love the... I love the idea that you're learning about uh, what's going on in the world from like, you know, not like it's, you don't know anything that happened before like the main character wakes up. I enjoy that as well. I enjoy the wandering about. I think the zombies are not the main part of the movie, especially when you get to the ending. Uh, like the idea, like half the movie, like basically the whole movie, the main character is just like looking for salvation of some kind. And then they think they finally 
Uh, they finally find it, but then it's just, you know, a bunch of rapists, basically. Um, my camera's falling. Uh, spoiler alert, by the way. I, I should have said that, but it's an old movie. Um, so I don't care. Uh, but, you know, it was pretty good. Um, I love the... The one thing about the the real ending, quote-unquote, um, is that they do confirm that, like, the entire, like, country is, was in quarantine or something. Um... But, like, I, one thing I like about the alternate ending is that's nondescript, right? Like, that's, like, alluded to at some point in the movie. Someone's, like, basically, like, you know, saying that they think that the entire country of England or whatever is in quarantine and that the rest of the world is fine and the salvation will come at some point. Uh, and then, like, you know, that is shown to be the case at the end uh, of the main movie. Uh, but, again, the alternate ending is pretty good, too, because then it's just, like, you don't know. Like, it could be that that's the case, but you don't know. And I, I do like that. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I do like that kind of feature as well. Where like, there's a lot of things in the movie that build the world, but I also like when they don't, you know, tie up the loose ends. I love the idea of there being loose ends because it makes you think about the story longer. The story sticks with you when there's loose ends, in my opinion. Uh, but anyway, I, I enjoyed this movie. Uh, the zombie scenes are good, like, but the zombie scenes, there's not that many of them, right? It's one of those movies where it's like, that's just the world, and you're watching, like, people navigating a world where there's zombies. Like, the zombies, I think, are secondary uh, to the idea of, like, the world ending. Uh, but anyway, I know that there's a sequel 28 weeks later. I might watch it tonight. I'm not sure. Um, but I definitely enjoyed this. I'm going to be watching more pandemic movies, more zombie movies. Uh, that kind of stuff is on my list, especially with the Omicron surge going on right now. Um, it seems, it seems like the world might be ending, folks. It really might be ending. Uh, but anyway, while it's ending, instead of doing anything else, I'm going to sit at home and do drugs and watch movies like 28 Days Later. Uh, so that's the idea. Uh, and, uh, yeah, good movie. Good, good. It's a film. I mean, really, it's, it's, it's a film. Uh, it's a filmographic experience. It's a videographic experience, uh, that contains an auditory experience that, uh, you know, it's, it's alongside it. They both happen at the same time. Uh, you know, there's the video, you watch things on a screen moving and then like, you know, the sound waves burst out of your speakers that kind of like, you know, make you understand, you know, can't read lips, right? Well, I, maybe you can, but I can't. So it's like, you need to have both at once. Uh, but anyway, good movie. I enjoyed it. Uh, go watch it if you haven't seen it and that's it. There you go. How do you feel about the movie reflecting humanity looking through 2022? 28 days later? Okay, I'll, I'll answer that question. Um, so, like, the whole, like, again, the, uh, the concept is it's a movie about people navigating uh, a world where zombies basically destroyed it, right? The zombies are not the threat in this movie. And I think that that's the thing that the end uh, section really kind of demonstrates is that, it, like, you know, like, there's the, a military outpost, you know, spoiling it here, where, like, you know, the, the main characters that have women in the group of main characters go, and then, like, the military outpost is just men, and then they just want to basically abuse their power of having guns and having, like, a safe zone to just have an excuse to just rape women. Um, and it's, like, that really is indicative of, like, human nature, right? Humans hate each other. Humans are awful, selfish, disgusting, illogical creatures, Right. Like and, and, and they will do anything and present anything as a way to justify, um, you know, their hatred of, of the, the fellow species. And, I, you know, I, th I think that the ending, especially when uh, when Jim comes back. Right. And like just fucks them all up and lets the zombies loose. I think that that was another good uh, angle to it, because it's like Jim could have had the, the satisfaction of killing all like the rapist super military losers. Right. And, but instead, you know, he used the zombie again to once again create a world where there's zombies in there. Because the whole point of the safe zone is that it's free from the zombies and it's just bad humans reacting to bad humans. And I knew when they showed that one zombie that was chained up, you know, for the science experiment, I knew that they would be used in some capacity, right? So I do like how it's like, you know, you start out the infection again from the get-go, from the jump, uh, but in this, then the what was once the safe zone. I, I love that scene at the end. 
Uh, it was, you know, or the scenes, I guess, you know, but the, the, the arc at the end where it's like Jim's running through and you can see, like, I love the part where you're looking at him through the, uh, the window and then you see his like, like, he's freaking out with his tongue and he's like, has that grin on his face. It's great. Like when he's, it's just, it's great. Uh, and that's what I'm talking about. The cinematography of this movie, right? Like it does a lot of, uh, you know, telling and not showing, you know, with like the way it, it, it transitions and what it focuses on and how the camera works. Um. But yeah, I mean, yeah, like it, humans are garbage. At the end of the day, the, you know, people are great, but humanity is trash, right? Like the collective is just really horrible. Uh, but yeah, really good movie. As an anarchist, I don't believe in fixed human nature. It's more nuanced. I agree. But one of the things is like, um, when... We are born and raised in a society, right? That society shapes us, right? So, like, if we created a new society and then, like, had a, a, a human being born into that society and all of their stimuli was that society, I don't, like, I don't, I don't, it's, it's the nurture versus nature argument, right? I believe it's mostly nurture. I believe, like, when we are born and raised in a dystopian hellhole capitalistic world, right, even if the world changes, those parts of capitalism, like, again, I view it as, like, imperialist military bases in your brain, right? They're, they take over portions of your brain, and they will always be there, right? Like, I hate fast food. I hate McDonald's. But, like, just thinking about it, I can create the taste of a chicken nugget in my brain, and it will always be like that for the rest of my life. I will be 90 years old. We can live, like, I will, like, I can spend my life, like you know, dedicating my life to banning fast food from assistance. I can win that campaign and destroy all fast food restaurants. But at the end of the day, I'm still going to be able to generate that, that exact taste of what a McDonald's chicken nugget is in my brain because it's there forever. Right? So it's like, that's the thing. Like there can be a giant societal collapse or shift or change, but people will still be stuck in the mindset that they were born and raised into because those are the important times. Those are the formative moments of your life is like the world that you're raised in as, as a young person. Uh, kill the cop in your head, Porkchop Express. That, there you go. I agree. Except instead of just, you know, I would broaden that out from cops to just, you know, capital. Like kill capitalism, kill that whole competition, like bullshit, kill all of that in your brain. And like, it's a process. You can't just, it's not like you shoot someone in the head with a gun and then they're dead. It's not that binary, right? Like it takes a lot of work. It's a mental illness is what that is. That's what capitalism ultimately is. It's a mental illness. It breaks your brain and it changes the way human brains work for the worse. It doesn't do anything good. Uh, and that's what you see in zombie movies is at the end of the day, if there's a zombie pandemic kind of thing, right? You were all still born and raised in capitalism. And so even though capitalism effectively collapsed, there is no more capitalism. Humans that were raised in capitalism are still going to, uh, you know, engage in that kind of fashion, even if it makes no sense, even if it's log logically inconsistent, uh, because that's really the power of brainwashing. Um, but yeah, so good questions. I should, you know, I'm going to throw that in the, the movie review segment. We had some good food for thought there.